Hey everyone, it's me QP83. I have a video here that hopefully will be some fun to watch. It's gonna be a lot of like, oh look at this, oh look at that. Um, it's not gonna be super informative or anything, but I received some fun mail and I wanted to show it to you guys and share it with you guys. Uh, so recently I received an email from someone who had been researching two of her childhood dolls, a uh, Skipper and a Barbie, and uh, she got them as a kid and she kept them, you know, as an adult, taking them with her wherever she wants. And she was finally at the point where she wanted them to go to a good home. And she specifically said that, like, things like eBay weren't really up her alley because uh, she didn't want them to go to someone who wouldn't appreciate them. So, uh, we corresponded back and forth and eventually the dolls ended up at my house. <laughs> I 100% I appreciate uh, the seller letting me uh, take care of some of her dolls that she was passing along. Uh, one of them was 100% on my, uh, my wish list. So let's talk about them. So what we have to show you, and there's a lot of dolls on the table, but only two of them came in the package. The, the big sell for me was that uh, I'm, I'm looking to get more Japanese skippers. As you may know, I have one brunette Japanese skipper in my collection, um, and there are at least three different hair colors. And so for me, one of my goals with skipper is to get all the other hair colors or to just expand my Japanese skipper collection. Japanese skippers have unique eyes, uh, which is 100% apparent when you look at them compared to the US releases. Uh, there was an exclusive Japanese skipper uh, around for a couple years in, I want to say like 64 to 66, something like that. Um, so I have, I've had the brunette one in my collection for quite some time, and I've always had on my wish list to get a blonde or a Titian or just any other Japanese skipper. So uh, the seller was actually selling a Japanese skipper and a bubble cut that she received as a child. And of course I was like, I'm very interested, <laughs> but I may not be able to give you as much money as you could probably get from other people. Uh, but as I said, we corresponded and we made a deal and her dolls came to live here. So the doll that was her childhood doll is this one right here. She is a blonde Japanese skipper. She has the unique uh, Japanese skipper eyes and she is wearing the outfit that she was most likely boxed in. There were certain skipper dolls that were sold boxed in fashions already, and this is most likely from uh, the seller's uh, recollection, the outfit she, she came in originally. Which is a super cute outfit on her, especially with the blonde hair. This is kind of like a pale blonde skipper. Uh, and what I like about the hair that are on the Japanese skippers is sometimes it can be a little more like shiny. It's always super soft as well. You can kind of see it on my, my brunette Japanese skipper here too. So this is uh, a doll wearing flower girl. And as I said, she was boxed in it as well. And uh, the person who sold it to me, she was such a good, like, good child. She kept all of, like, most of the accessories, if not all of them. So this outfit is pretty much near complete with the headband and the gloves and the socks and the shoes and the dress. like. <laughs> all of the outfits that came with this girl and the corresponding Barbie uh, there's a lot of accessories which you don't always see so this is a really cute example of a blonde Japanese skipper uh, they're just so adorable and you can see the differences I have a sample skipper here and I have the Japanese skipper here you can totally see the difference between the faces and of course the sample skipper looks a little, a little different from the original Skipper, or like the one that was mass produced more often, but you can still see a very big difference. I feel like you could even see a difference between the brunette and the blonde, just a little bit. And I'm not quite sure why, but like I feel like mine is a chubbier head. Maybe it's just because this one is paled so, so badly that her face is basically yellow, and this one isn't, hasn't paled as badly. But you'll see the lip color. There is a coral color on her lips. There would have been more of a color, you know, when she was first out of the box. But you can tell that it's not gone. It's just like a very creamy sort of yellow that matches the skin. And the eyes are really cute. 
And with these dolls, you'll see a lot of the times their arms are, be are very yellow. That's just how it works. Uh, that's just how the vinyl was when they made these guys. So, this Skipper doll came with some outfits. We have Land and Sea, which has always been one that I've liked. Uh, I don't actually own this outfit, but <laughs> she had the hat, the shirt, all the pieces. I don't think it came with shoes. Uh, so this is my sample Skipper wearing Land and Sea. And then we have the schoolgirl outfit, where my, uh, which is being modeled by my Japanese skipper, the brunette. The skirt was like really hard to put on her, so apparently my skipper needs to lose a little bit of weight so it's not like hooking her so much. But it's a super cute outfit. A lot of their outfits are red. Like I was looking at the outfits that I own, all of them are red. Also, there was a hat. Super cute! So, uh, Skipper came with that. Also, if we just put some attention to the box here, this is the original box she came in. Inside the box are some other fun things. We have some booklets that would show you, or that do show us what Mattel was marketing at the time. So inside here you'll see some adorable Skipper graphics. Of various outfits and clothing and accessories. All that fun stuff. There's also one that has more of the Barbie stuff. I miss when Mattel would put like booklets and, and advertising like this within their dolls. There were some other things that may not be related to Skipper, but they'll be related to the Barbie you'll see next. Uh, so there is a set that has some, some, uh, not lingerie, but some, you know, like slips and things. So there's a slip. Uh, we have a headband. There's also a blue slip here for, for Barbie. Some underwear. There's a clutch in there. So that came in the dressmaker box. Uh, we have, I, I love how she used match boxes to, uh, to keep some of this stuff together. Uh, there's a variety of necklaces. Again, more for the Barbie than the Skipper. So there's a necklace. We have uh, a clutch and we have some gloves. Or these are socks, rather. So we have socks. They're probably supposed to go with her. We have another match box that has uh, a cute little mirror and a comb and a brush that would have come with one of the, I wanna say one of the fashion packs. Uh, we have hangers. Ta-da! Some more necklaces. And we have uh, obviously the box, which as I said was a bo uh, box Japanese skipper. And you can tell that because there's a tariff sticker. It's a green tariff sticker inside the box. And me, even though like I collect them, I wasn't quite sure of like the significance of the tariff sticker, but apparently it's really cool to have a boxed skipper from Japan with that sticker. So another thing that came with this set that is apparently highly sought after, which I didn't know until a couple weeks ago, uh, is this. It is a plastic stand. Skipper is written in gold. It says by Mattel, and then there's a metal, a metal top here. Just do that, and then you have a doll stand. Apparently, the stand was only put in Japanese boxed dressed dolls. So if you got a doll that was in a red bathing suit, even if it's a Japanese Skipper, uh, there, it would have had a different stand. But this was with the boxed dolls, so it is rare and apparently hard to find. <laughs> so it's really nice that it was part of the set as well. Uh, because it really does help to, uh, even if I didn't have, like, first-hand knowledge that this was a dressed doll, this would mean 100% it was. So this is a really fun stand. I'm actually surprised it's plastic, because <laughs> so many people are like, oh, it's the stand! So I thought it would be, like, fancier. But this is plastic. This is the metal part. And it's just, like, gold embossed letters on the stand. Uh, that that people really 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 hunt for for their collections 
So I was lucky that the seller had all these things. As I said, she was really good about keeping the pieces to everything. <laughs> so you can clearly tell that she loved her dolls. While I'm doing this, I will say there's a lot to be said in, about being genuine uh, when you are you know, trying to, to either buy something or you're selling something. I feel like there, there are two different types, types of people. There's people that sell to make top dollar. And you know what, if, if that's what your goal is, that's great. There are also people who sell and they want to make sure it goes to a good home and they want to make sure it goes to the right person. And they just want to make sure it goes to someone who will appreciate it. And that was the seller that I was dealing with. And even though I told her flat out in, in the emails that she could probably get more money from other people, she agreed to to sell me her her childhood possessions, which is something that is, there's so much weight to that. Like, I think if I were selling my collection, I would do the same thing. Like I would give something to someone who appreciated it or who was going to appreciate it and give my doll a good life for the second time uh, over someone who was going to offer me like thousands of dollars. Not that I have any dolls in my collection, that would be thousands of dollars, but it's definitely one of those things where we were, I was really lucky uh, that the seller could see that I would give her dolls a good home. And so if you're selling something, it's always something to think about. Think about what you want to get out of it. Do you want to get out top dollar? Do you want to uh, give, you know, just get it out and get as much as you can for it? Or do you want to give it to someone who will appreciate it? So that's something to consider if or when you go through your collection. So. On to the next thing. <laughs> ah, the bubble cuts. So the second doll in the grouping is this super cute bubble cut. I will be totally honest, I'm not an expert in vintage Barbies. I am not, I actually, uh, I only own two maybe, <laughs> and they're both ponytail Barbies. Uh, so this is the first bubble cut. That I really that I really had and that I really like inspected because it's it's not always the thing that I collect. So this is uh, the bubble cut that came with Skipper. They were both lifelong friends, these two dolls. So the seller really wanted them to go together, which I can totally understand. So this is the bubble cut. Both of these are blonde, by the way. Fun fact, because I reached out and I was I asked the history of the dolls and their story, because I feel like if you can ask the story of dolls from the their actual owners before they move into your collection, they're worth so much more in terms of uh, like emotional value. So she said, growing up in Japan, uh, that all the everyone around her was like dark-eyed and brunette. Everyone had you know, black hair. So she chose to get the blonde dolls because they were different from the people around her and, and herself even. So uh, that's that's a really fun sort of fact about why both of these, the, both the skipper and the bubble cut are blonde. Uh, so this is the bubble cut. I'm not sure honestly if she's one of those like side parted ones or not. I couldn't tell, my mom couldn't tell. She just looks really cute. We gave her a bit of a hair wash uh, and her hair is super, super clean. She's wearing the red coat, uh, red flare right here. And the interesting thing about this fashion is they've reproduced it over time. So this is a very thin velveteen. You can see the lining is really pretty and it's open on the bottom. This is the reproduction red flare. The material is very thick and they have sewn the bottom down whereas this is this is open. But besides that this is a very soft material right here and this is actually really rough rough and thick so that was kind of surprising. Also they put this weird plastic thing under her hat. I don't know why but I guess it's to keep it on but as you can see this hat is staying on fine by itself without the help of a little plastic rim. 
so this is a red flare. Uh, again, just a super cute bubble cut. This was another one of the outfits that was with, uh, with this Barbie. It's called Mood for Music. It's like a blue sweater, a white halter, blue pants. Super cute. And then there's some other outfits in here. We have vacation time. So it has a sweater and it has shorts. This is a super cute sweater. Again, in really good shape. Uh, we had her swimsuit. And there's some other pieces here as well. Barbie learns to cook. And then there's the apron that goes with it. I think that's the apron that goes with it. Um, there was a hat, which I don't know if it goes with any of these outfits. Um, and then there's this. And then under this uh, jacket is a yellow sheath dress that you can see there. Just really fun, very classic Barbie. It's in a pale yellow, uh, and it's called Silk Sheath. And then she's also wearing a necklace. Because why not? If Barbie has pearls, Barbie's gonna wear pearls. <laughs> a, few other, a few other things to note. Uh, there was a skipper hat, which I think comes with the red, the simple red dress she wears. Also a ton of accessories. Uh, as I said, the person who sold her to me was like meticulous about keeping the accessories. So there's some glasses that go with this outfit, I wanna say. Uh, we have the apple that goes with the schoolgirl outfit. Uh, we have a hair piece. Uh, we have the smallest glasses known to man. They literally fit on my thumb. There you go, the smallest glasses ever known to man. They uh, they fit on Skipper's face, but the funny thing is, it's like, they like are so small even on Skipper's face, <laughs> but they look really cute. Uh, Barbie has a pair of cat eye glasses. And then there is the handkerchief, or the rag that goes with the, they're the pot holder, I guess, that goes with the cooking Barbie. Uh, but they're all in this, they're in this cute little caboodle. Um, there's all these pots and pans that go with Barbie learns to cook. Uh, there's a tea kettle. There's a toaster. There's a flower. All these fun accessories. We have a camera. Uh, we have a fun little like fish, like a pan that's cooking a fish. Uh, we have all the accessories for the schoolgirl outfit, including the pencils all wrapped up in this nice little bundle. We have a trophy that says, World's Greatest Mother, which my mom and I couldn't figure out what this belonged to. We have this cute little oven, stove top, to, uh, to play make-believe with. And inside the stove top were more accessories, like plates and teacups and spoons and gravy jars. <laughs> Uh, so all these fun things that um, the person who I was working with who was looking to pass these on wanted to, uh, all these things that she took care of for all of her life. Uh, so it means so much, honestly, when someone says, you know what, I trust you with these things that I have cared for and that I've kept with me through, you know, all my my moves and you know my children and, and, and all of these things so it means a lot so this is just a quick I say quick but this video is probably insanely long um, and it's just a, a, a look at some of the things that came to my house recently this is really good dolly mail <laughs> uh, I haven't really bought many dolls just because there haven't been many doll shows and I do prefer to see them in person but this just happened to be at a good time where I uh, you know I figured why not and also I, I really can you know obviously I was looking for a Japanese skipper and uh, so you know when the email came through I was like well maybe this is fate 
Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Masumi who was uh, the person who, who I was working with and who trusted me with her childhood dolls that she's taken through life uh, and, and treated really well. So I just wanted to say thank you to her uh, for trusting me to continue treating her dolls well. And also if you're watching this, if you ever want pictures of them, just let me know. I'll snap a couple pictures uh, and then send them off to you. But I, I promise they'll be, they're in good hands and I so appreciate that you trusted me with your, with your childhood dolls. It's just such an honor. So let me know what your thoughts are of these dolls in the, in the comments below and I will talk to you soon. Bye!